You got to have it to have oatmeal. Oatmeal in your coffee? We have a meal. <laughs> Put some in my oatmeal, but you gotta have milk to make a shake too. Blend up ice cream. Oh, you like the almond milk? I eat almonds for breakfast. <laughs> But I drink more water than the I like water. Sometimes I drink too much. I gotta take pills if I drink too much though, because it flushes all the potassium out. And when my potassium goes, I start getting cramps. It ain't fun. I have shirts. Y'all mind your P's and Q's. Steve and Renee are listening. Don't talk about them anymore. Oh no, I'm just messing with him. I said Steve Renee just logged in, so y'all quit talking about them. <coughs> There we go. Five whole minutes. Wow. Yeah. How, how'd that happen? Everybody got here. <laughs> Matthew chapter 12. We'll mess them up. Start five minutes early. <laughs> I'm wondering where Jim and Jackie are. That's the only. They're usually here by now. Mm -hmm. They usually sit right here. No. No. There's, there's no name on the pew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't. There's no names on the parking lot. Okay. They usually. I don't want to go with they Sometimes it's good for people to move around. And give you a different perspective. Yeah. Right. And I forgot right here. When we were in when we were in New Orleans, our church was not yeah. super big. It was about five. Five. And we were two sections one morning, and they thought we were visitors. And all we did was move in here. Where are y'all visiting from? Oh, those Jews over there. <laughs> that was fun. Right. I'm still sharing. I don't like the group shit. Oh, because your phone keeps going off, going off every time somebody answers or puts a thumbs up, your phone just goes down. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they stay up late and you hear. I turn my uh, notifications off. My phone at 8 o'clock. Go silent except for the ring. I'll get a notification if I get a text or an email. But if you call me, I can do it. That's what I tell people. If it's important, yeah. call me. If you text me or email me, I may not get it until morning. And I don't feel that. Bad. That's not an emergency. I need to talk with you after. Okay. I think we'll dig my tracks for 300. Rent my diggers like 240. Mm. I figured it'd be worth somebody else mm -hmm. not having to call it. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. I mean, no, no, that's I'll buy the pipe. That's him digging it. There's no way to get that. It's expensive now. He said he had one of these black stuff. He said it went from. I see from seven to like fourteen dollars. Oh, double. Yep. 
Yeah, you got to plug them in. That's how you got to go there. Especially when you don't even make that an hour. What do you think about that? Oh, I hear you. Especially when I'm getting some kind of thing. Yeah. I hear you. I like that. Yeah, it was. My brother was talking about it. We were born orange. So how much is truck giving? Yeah, for 17. Is it just like every 17 dollars? You spend four dollars, four dollars, four dollars, four dollars. I didn't look at it like that. That's a lot of money. Is it true? Yeah. That's the easy way to do it. If you've got a kid on the team, or you've got a kid stopping. All righty. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 12 tonight. New chapter. Well, we started it last Wednesday night. We're going to be in verse 10, but let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll get running off. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be here tonight. Father, we thank you that you've given us your word. Help us to be good students to not only see and hear, but to obey your word tonight. Father, pray for Mr. Jim. I pray that the surgery will be completely effective, that his eyes will see much better now, and that you'll give him a quick and speedy recovery. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Without looking now, you got your Bibles open. What was last week about? <laughs> Jesus. Just about anywhere in the Gospels you can get away with that. Wow, you're a lot of help. Do what? See the teacher's pet over here. Not... He pays attention. He's on my side. Hey. He not only gets an A and a check mark, but he gets a free donut. That'll teach y'all. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sabbath. Absolutely. We are in verse 10, but we are not starting another idea. This is continued because this is a very important uh, truth that the people in Jesus's day needed to understand. And I think it's got just as much application to us, or at least maybe by the time I'm done, you will think it as well and how we ought to arrange our thinking about this. In verse 10, now back verse 9, he went to their synagogue. In verse 10, behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. That word withered there means to be dry or to be shrunken. Now, if you were to look it up, you'll find that it's used mostly if we said like a dry riverbed or the ground dried up or something dried up. Typically, we know this about the ground. When, when the ground dries up, it shrinks. You know, it, a neat thing to watch in the fellowship hall is when we get a whole lot of rain, the crack in the floor will close up. And when we don't have any rain for a while, it spreads apart. As the clay under the foundation dries up, it, it mm -hmm. shrinks away. <clears throat> well, that's the idea here. So he's got a hand that has shrunken. Basically, it's missing the moisture it should have in it. It's dried up. It's shriveled up. It's unusable. That's what it means there by withered. They ask Jesus, is it lawful or legal, not by the Romans, but by the biblical law, the Mosaic law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? And the reason why they ask is so that they could accuse him. They want to charge him with something. They, they want to arrest him. They want to kill him. Now we just got to find a reason to do it. Notice their, their desire started backward. We shouldn't seek anybody out for justice unless they have done something wrong. We don't say, man, I'm going to go find something wrong against them and, and charge them. 
And that's how a lot of things happen. That that shows a backward thinking in our mind. There's even more backward thinking going on. But that's their reason for asking this. They don't care about the man. They don't care about his suffering. They don't care about his situation. All they want to know is, is it legal to heal on the Sabbath day, days, plural, according to the law of Moses? In Luke chapter 13, we have another issue something similar to this in Luke chapter 13 and verse 14 and I want you to as you follow along hear the coldness in this man's heart in Luke chapter 13 verse 14 and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and he said unto the people there are six days in which men ought to work and them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day if you can put the inflection in because that's exactly what he's doing there. You've got six other days you can get healed. Why do you have to do it today? He's completely indifferent to their suffering. I mean, if somebody's suffering, is not immediately a good time to alleviate their suffering? Yeah. Look over in the next chapter, 14, verse 3. <clears throat> and I'll just show you this one for because this is how Jesus does sometimes. In verse 3. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and the Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? So Jesus oftentimes will take their own questions and he flips it around on them, getting them to speak for out of the heart flows what the mouth says. We're going to be looking at the guy's hearts tonight. And that, that first one, that, that ruler is pretty much like these Pharisees here. Man, you got six other days you could have done that. Why in the world you got to do it today? Well, here we are in the synagogue and it's on the Sabbath day. Why would you heal on this day? Was the Siloam closed on the Sabbath? I don't know if they would have ever asked that question. <laughs> but you're not supposed to draw water on the Sabbath. No, but everybody waited there for the angel to <clears throat> appear and touch it. So the first person there got healed. I don't know that he ever moved on the Sabbath day, though. But Jesus is going to. Jesus is going to figure them out, though. We do have a, a, a illustration here. So Jesus said unto them, and notice he uses a question. What man shall there be among you? He personalizes it. In that crowd of Pharisees, which one of you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath days, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? What will you not do to save your property on the Sabbath day? So he flips it around. If it's important to them, what are they going to do? They're going to do it. And a lot of times that's that's what we're guilty of. If it benefits me, it's okay. But for you, uh-uh. It's hypocrisy, but it is a different set of rules. We set ourselves apart. Now, this hear me clearly. This doesn't mean you can't tell your kids it's okay for me to do this because I'm the parent. For instance, driving. There's a reason you can't drive. I'm an adult. I am legally allowed to drive. You're not. Besides that, you can't even see over the steering wheel. When you become an adult, you can drive. That's not hypocrisy. That's common sense. That's good sense. We're talking, what, what are the things we want to talk about that? I mean, it's, you don't give a two-year-old a, a 45 or a 50 caliber, or, here, go have fun in the yard. No, there are some things that, that you can use that line of reasoning and that's okay. I'm not arguing against that line of reasoning, but when you make an exception for yourself and somebody else doesn't get the exception that's on the same level playing field as you therein lies the hypocrisy well I'm the pastor that's why I get to do this I don't know that that would float with Jesus in fact I don't even know that I can find where Jesus ever said well I can do it because I'm Jesus <laughs> what he did he did because it was right and therein it's either right or it's wrong which one of you if you got a sheep and I, I asked you this last week, how many of you, if we go back to the 1960s and 70s with all the blue laws, 
if Walgreens was open and you had a splitting headache and you had run out of headache medicine, wouldn't have gone and bought it on a Sunday if you had the option. Yeah, but we need to close them down because people shouldn't be buying stuff. Well, who gets to figure out what's good, what's necessary or not? Everything was closed. You couldn't mow grass. You couldn't do anything that the law could hear or see, or you were arrested. I have never seen anything like that. And I'm okay with that if it's a law for everyone. Yes. Yes. Well, heart, you can you can have a heart attack today, but we can't have a heart attack today because I can't go to the doctor till tomorrow. We did. We disagree with that. Mm-hmm. And, and I've asked before, how many of you back in the 60s and 70s, you got the Sunday morning newspaper. You couldn't wait to get it. Are you going to do without your Sunday morning newspaper? I can do this all day long, too, yeah. I have, because it, it irritates the snot out of me. Double standards. I don't like double standards. <laughs> it's natural. But it, it's a double standard. Mm-hmm. But there's something even more insidious about this. He says, if you have a sheep, would you do it? If you have, you know, if your car was in the ditch, would you get it out? If, you know, those kinds of things. Look at verse 12. How much then is a man better than or surpasses than a sheep? Now, he, he's, he's called them all good. I mean, all of them know if their sheep would have fallen in the ditch, what would they have done? They would have got it out because that sheep means money or that sheep means sacrifice or that sheep means food. And so they're going to benefit themselves by getting it out. And Jesus asked a simple question. How much more surpassing value is a man compared to a sheep? See, we have lost sight of that in our common culture today. It burns people up. You got a dog that's disrupting your life? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah, but it's my child. No, it isn't your child. It isn't your grandchild. It's a dog. What if it's the neighbor's dog? Get rid of it. You have legal redress when it concerns that, but... But my point being, if you've got a dog that's disrupting human lives, your dog does not have value above human lives. But that's what we have done. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe we haven't all done it just overtly. And certainly we haven't done it to the extent like California. Let's pick on them. They're low hanging fruit. It's real easy. Let's elect a whole bunch of politicians that agree that we need to not let farmers use the water in the river. Because we got to save a little minnow. Yeah. What's more important, human lives or the minnow? In California, the minnow. And we may giggle and shake our heads, but you know this as well as I do. What starts in California affect, okay. infects the rest of our country. Uh-huh. Yes. Because it isn't just this isn't a political issue. Their churches teach this as well. There are some people right now in the Southern Baptist Convention that will try to convince you that abortion is on the same level as PETA. And I'll fight you on that tooth and nail. I don't care how many PhDs, DMs, DDs, what, I don't care what you got behind your name. It just means you're more stupid, most likely. Right, Calvin? That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, teach your pants on a great way, Chief. <laughs> he wants another donut. You get two donuts, Calvin. You want to try for a full dozen? <laughs> he would die if I brought him a dozen. <laughs> he would share is what he'd do. But, but think about it. Animals now have insurance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There are some animals that are better taken care of yeah. than our neighbors. 
People put braces on their dogs in California. I did not know that. You know that? <laughs> on their teeth? Yes. Braces. <laughs> okay. So, so we've got people that think then that their pets are worth a million dollars. Yes. Is a human soul not worth more than that then? Amen. And that's what we're forced to grapple with. He, he uses this. He's not, he's not boxing the Pharisees in just to box them in. But he's trying to get them to see straight. Human lives are worth more than any animal they could have brought up. The man is of much more value than the sheep. And so I got to thinking about this. Give me an Old Testament passage besides the book of Genesis that teaches us this. You, you may have something completely different than I do, but you're going to know mine when I tell you. When I, when I read it to you, you'll recognize it. But I'm just curious, do any of you know a Bible passage that teaches something about the value of man? How about a woman? No. Proverbs. Man. Yeah, but her, her, it's more than rubies, but it doesn't say she's worth more than animals. So I'm I'm stretching you there. I would agree with she's worth more than earthly treasures, but something that would definitively answer what Jesus is addressing and what I'm asking to address. Was you waving your hand? No. Oh. What is the biggest, a yeah. Bible verse? Yeah, a Bible verse that teaches that man is of more value or is higher up. Hint, hint. Just below the angels. Yes, just below the angels. Some eight. I had to give you practically the answer, though. You don't get a donut. You get a cookie. A hard, dry cookie. Oh, you get to stay out. Okay, here we go. In, in Psalm 8, verse 4. What is man... That you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visitest him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with the glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen. Yes, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now, don't look back in, in your earlier chapter in Matthew. Don't look back earlier. What did Jesus appeal to last week when the religious leaders were challenging him about the Sabbath? David. What? Okay. When, when he was eating. And, and how, did, how did Jesus draw that out? What, what was the first little phrase before he mentioned David that he prefaced it with? Have you never read? Have you not read? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> have we not remembered? <laughs> but but it's the same thing. Because Psalm 8 was in their Bible. And for some reason, it was convenient to forget what was inconvenient in your own life. It's convenient for me to save my sheep, but it's inconvenient for me to value another human being because then I've got to either give of myself or I've got to permit that things can happen on days when it's necessary. Look, just a side note here. Jesus doesn't consider it necessary that you forgot to get twigs for the Sabbath. That means you're going to eat your food without cooking it and you're not allowed to eat raw meat. So you're just going to stick with vegetables. Are you going to starve? No. No. Is it going to teach you the next time to get up and get your wood before you? Absolutely yeah. it will. But if somebody is broken, if somebody is wounded, I didn't say an animal, somebody, isn't it always a good time to help when you know there's a need? Their interest was more in accusing him and getting him in trouble than, than they were against the one being healed. But that's what they were using. Well, yeah, but they didn't care about the man that, that needed to be healed. That's what I'm saying, though. But their main interest was getting Jesus in trouble for doing it. Well, yeah, he's just a pawn because he means nothing to them. Give me another Bible passage where Jesus tells us this is true. And particularly two people that would have been around the religious groups. I know I'm vague, but you got to think. 
Jesus addresses this issue. Who is my neighbor? He who has a need. Jesus said, there was a man that was going down from the temple and he fell amongst the thieves and he was beaten and robbed and left for dead. And a priest came by and saw him and walked around him. Now, if the priest is going down from Jerusalem, where has he been? He's been in the temple. He's been, air quote, close to God. And a man that's been close to God ought to recognize what? The guy needs help. Yeah. Agony. A Levite comes down. Where has a Levite been? In the temple. Close to God. He sees the man and he walks around. And then when Jesus throws in the hook there, he said, but a Samaritan came down. Now, the Samaritan would be the proverbial bad guy in any Jewish story because, oh, that's them Samaritans. But the Samaritan, who wasn't a Levite or a priest, comes down, sees the man, he stops, binds up his wounds, puts him on his own animal, which means the Samaritan walks, lets the other guy ride, brings him to a hotel, pays his night, tells the guy, look, you take care of him. When I come back through, I'm going to pay you everything else that it costs you. But do we know whether it was on the Sabbath or not? That's irrelevant. That, that part's irrelevant. But the point is, the Samaritan did the law not being a man of the law compared to a Levite and a priest who not only served in the temple but should have known the law and didn't know God at all. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, oh, global warming, we've got to get rid of all of the cattle. Because cow flatulence, and I'm being kind right now, causes global warming. It's all you meat eaters. Oh, man. I didn't know obeying Jesus could get me in trouble. What did, what did Jesus tell Peter? Arise, kill, and eat. Well, you, you don't kill. Well, I don't think of it this way. I'm going out to the corn patch and going to kill some corn. <laughs> no, you kill a sheep. You kill a goat. You kill a camel, you kill a deer. Or a pig. Or, well, no, not here. You don't kill a pig. You can't use that in the Jew people. <laughs> got three more books till you can do that. Yeah, we got three more <laughs> books till you can get there, Peter. <laughs> but, but exactly. Paul warns that in the latter days, and we're pretty close to them, that in the latter days, people are going to forbid others to eat meat. Now, meat there doesn't mean just red meat, but it, meat means all kinds of foods. And so they're trying to get us on engineered everything. A hamburger that has no ham or beef in it at all. A veggie burger. I lived on those things in elementary school. We called them soybean burgers because they were soybean burgers. I don't go to Round Top and Westlake to get a soybean burger. And if they ever start serving soybean burgers, I won't go there because I go there to get a beef burger. Because animals are subservient to humans. We are to have dominion over them. But there are some people that want you to think that you're not as important as controlling the cattle. It's all around us. Y'all are waiting for the hook, right? Yep, Renee, and if you didn't hear it, from my left side, your right over there came the very same thing. Look at the birds of the air. Are we not more important than the birds? Absolutely. Wherefore, because a human being is of surpassing value than a sheep, wherefore it is lawful to do well, to do good, to do justice, to do right on the Sabbath days. It's always the right time to do the right thing. There, man, I got a song just kind of buzzing through my head. I'm going to have an earworm until I figure it out. It, and, it, and it's the, the message of the song, and it wasn't a hymn. It was a somebody singing on the radio. It's always the right time to do the right thing. Yeah. Hey, man, I wonder if I should give that person a lift. Are you going their direction? 
do you have a space for it? Are they carrying an AK-67? I know there's no such thing, but for people that are driving along, it might as well be an AK-67 because, man, it looked like a bazooka to me. You ain't got a clue what these things are. They're going to rape me and rob me and kill me and steal my money. Oh, yeah, walking down Moss Bluff during the middle of the day is how did you do that, right? I've never had a person pull a gun on me once, and I've picked up lots of people. I've had to air out my truck after people got out, but I've never been threatened. I've been thanked a whole lot. Is it always a good time to do the right thing? Yes, it is. You're on your way to church and you see somebody with a flat tire and they're standing there scratching their head like they don't know whether it shrunk or the other ones blew up. They're not quite confident. What has happened on their car? You're going to be late for church. Is it right to stop and help them or should you just, man, they should have thought about it earlier. Stop. Yeah. What if you're late for church? It is a good thing. What if you don't even make it to church? What if your neighbor lost a loved one overnight and they're just tore up and they need somebody to sit with them? Are people more important than our laws and regulations and rules? Amen. If it is okay to lift the sheep up out of the ditch, then it's always a good time to do something for a human being who is suffering to do right. It is lawful then to do good, to do well on the Sabbath day. Then said he to the man, stretch forth your hand. Notice he didn't touch the man. He didn't put mud on his hand. Jesus didn't do anything but pass a command. The man reached out his hand. Has he broke the Sabbath yet? I'm not talking about Jesus. Has the man broke the Sabbath? No. He didn't chop wood. He didn't plow a field with that hand. All he does is stick it out. Jesus hasn't done anything other than tell the man to stick it out. The man sticks out his hand and it was restored whole like as the other. Now we ought to be excited for him. Man, my neighbor got a raise. Yes. Oh, man, why did he get the raise? I've been needing a raise, Lord. Why didn't I get one? I can meddle there a long time. It's all right. Keep going. <laughs> the, you could imagine the worst, but nothing <laughs> should prepare you for verse 14. It shouldn't because I'm going to assume that you recognize the value in human lives as compared to anything else. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against Jesus, how they might destroy him. They just saw righteousness before their eyes. Which one of them could heal if the guy had come on Monday? Or even, this is really fun. Which one of them could have healed him on a Sunday? Oh, forgot Christianity. You can't do work on the Sunday, so he's got to come on the Monday. The guy's toast on Saturday and he's toast on Sunday because you can't do nothing on a Sunday. They planned to kill Jesus just because he did good. And what they couldn't do. And he did something they couldn't do. And they planned it on a Sunday. No, they planned it on a Sabbath. But uh, akin to planning how to do it on a Sunday. So I didn't even think about this before. <laughs> this is this is good, man. You just you just <laughs> no, but back in the '60s and '70s, the people, man, I'm so much better than them that are out there fishing, man. Wonder what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. Yeah, I got to do this. I got to do that. And Tuesday, and there ain't no thoughts on that person's mind about the Lord one bit whatsoever. Just a, it's, all it is, it's, it's a shifting value because the Sabbath day was a day to reflect on what God had done. And listen, this is important. It may not be for us because we've got refrigerators and cabinets. But if your crop's in the field and it falls on a Sabbath day, 
that it's time to harvest, you wait. You wait because you trust God to take care of you. That'd be tough. Again, they don't have refrigerators. Nope. They didn't have combines, which is absolutely fascinating now. I don't know how many of y'all are aware of this. There are farmers now. Daylight has nothing to do with it. They go simply by the moisture in the field. Mm -hmm. If it's two o'clock in the morning and the time in the moisture is right, you harvest at two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You've seen it. It blew my mind when I learned it. But that's modern technology has allowed that. For them, you harvest when the light comes up and you go back home when the light goes down. It, you might be able to push it a little bit if there was a good clear full moon. Maybe you could work a little extra longer. But all of y'all know what it's like. You try to work in the dark, you create more, bigger problems. Be better just to go home, get a good night's rest, eat, wake up in the morning when there's light, and go back to your business. Trusting God. Something these religious leaders did not know how to do. They've read the word, but they didn't read the word. They claim to know God. Jesus says, no, you're of your father, the devil. That was pretty tough. But they planned how they might destroy him. This makes it clear completely to me. They cared no wit for this man. None. None. Are we unaffected by the suffering in the world? I mean, you, you can't fix everything. You can't stop everything. But are you unaffected by the suffering in Ukraine? Who would think in 2021 that we would be living almost like they went through it 100 years ago? That's why you don't need history. And I'm just thinking out loud because I've postulated and I've even said it from the pulpit a couple of times. What if God gave us a hundred year reprieve from all that? What if World War I and World War II was supposed to be the end of times? Mm -hmm. And God gave people, I'll give you a space to repent. Mm -hmm. And in 1945, the greatest generation begins to pat themselves on the back. Tom Brokaw writes his book, The Greatest Generation, and he doesn't give God any credit any either. And instead what we said, look what we can do instead of thanking God for what he has done. And then we cement our judgment twice as bad. Fascinating that was it 2018, 2019 when they had the um, Spanish flu? Mm -hmm. 1918. Yeah, absolutely fascinating here 100 years later, almost repeating verbatim. My daddy told me about that. You're pretty old there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was stuck in their mind. Yeah. He told about the awful storm they had, too, in 1918. The Depression. How many of y'all eat a lot of chicken now? What's happening, at least across our country? Forget others. That's going to affect the price of eggs and chicken. The bird flu. Uh -huh. And they're killing their flocks and dumping them left and right. Okay, I can handle you messing with my beef. So I can eat a lot of chicken and a lot of pork. But then when you start pricing everything out of people's reach, if we think we've seen suffering, I know it has happened in the past. We don't have a clue. No. But how are we going to react when we see the suffering in our neighbors and our fellow man? Do what? And our grandchildren. And our grandchildren. Yeah. How are we going to... When anything takes precedence over the value of human beings, we're on the wrong road. Abortion, it's not going to stop. And the reason is because we don't value human lives. When a murderer has more rights than the people he has murdered, there's a problem. And it ought to bother us. It ought to irritate us. And it for sure ought to affect how you press that button or flip that lever in the voting booth. Oh, but that's just politics. It shouldn't divide us. 
Abortion shouldn't divide us. If you don't value the unborn, why would you value anything else? The most helpless of us. If Planned Parenthood was aborting puppies and kittens, they would have been shut down. Oh. Oh. And I wish I had a million dollars, but I know it wouldn't float because I'd have to do it on some obtuse channel that would never get seen by more than 100 people. But if I could buy the space and get CBS, NBC, and ABC to run an ad, instead of the poor little puppies crying at supper time and they want you to give your money, I would just put up for three minutes a baby being ripped out of its mother's womb and saying, and you don't have compassion on that. Well, didn't California just do a 28-day post-delivery yes. abortion thing? Yeah. But if you don't... Ladies, could you walk past a baby that was laying on the floor and crying and not stop and see in some way to what's going on, why it's suffering? Where are we if that happens? Man, I, the internet, good or bad, I have watched things on the internet that it's like, Lord, I wish I'd never even known that existed. Watch a man get his head cut off with somebody holding a knife and just. Oh, but Islam's a peaceful religion. They care about their fellow human being. Yeah. The Pharisees held a council on how it might destroy Jesus. They are so self-absorbed. They are so self-righteous that they no longer care about the pain and suffering of others. So let me poke some more. I love poking, okay? So everybody's wanting to come to our country. And they want to flood the southern border. And they want to cross in over here because in America, you can make your way. Now, not everybody, but some of those people are fleeing from countries where it's practically impossible to sleep without sleeping with an eye open. Honduras, Guatemala. Okay, if we are the greatest country in the world, why don't we send SEAL Team 6 down there to Honduras, get rid of the drug lords, get rid of the evil people, and allow the people of Honduras to live in peace? We cannot let even our country's laws make us unaffected by the plight and the suffering of others. Now, oh, the only thing to do is to bring them in and to give them education. And no, no, that's not the only thing to do. But to doing the right thing would mean we cut off all the money that all of our justice departments are making on prosecuting these guys when they come to our country through the drug trade. Let me ask it a different way. Who would lose out if cancer was cured? Pharmaceutical companies. Who would have nothing to do if the drug trade was completely stopped? Justice Department, law enforcement. Border Patrol, law enforcement. But if we fix that, then we don't, there's a whole lot of law officers we don't need. Now, I'm not saying the law officers are thinking this, but I can promise you this. Our politicians pass the laws they do because it benefits their pockets and they don't yeah. care a yeah. whit about the suffering they inflict on people. And who votes them in the office in our country? We do. We've got to be careful in this regards here that no matter what we see taking place across our country that we don't turn our heads away from true suffering and pain i'm not talking about feigned now i'm not talking about fake if they're all the way over here from oh let's say saudi arabia and they're trying to sneak over our borders the fact that they could afford a plane ticket over here a bus ticket over here you yeah, they're up to nefarious. They're no good. But if it's a mama carrying her kids 
fleeing from Honduras because her son and her husband were killed. How can we not be moved with by compassion? And did you see the border patrolman that lost his life trying trying to save two drug dealers? Yeah. But he didn't know that's he what they were when he, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's. But isn't it always right to do good? There's never a wrong time to do right. But if we're so caught up on ourselves, that's where we're, we're not careful. That's what Jesus is poking at here. These people know the word. These people have read the word. There are people that are in Christendom, some of them even in Southern Baptist Convention, that are going to try to tell you that Abortion is no more greater than other ills that people are facing, pets included. I'll take you to the website. I'll show it to you. How in the world can they still be in a church? I mean, if I found out somebody in this church was cool, you wouldn't be. It wouldn't be fun at all because then I would call out a name. <laughs> You mean there's no rainbow bridge? Oh, there is one, but it's not here. It's in Beaumont. That's on the way to Beaumont. No, I'm talking about the rainbow bridge with all the pets going to heaven to yeah, wait no. for us. <laughs> no, I was asked by a very sincere little kid yesterday. Do pets go to heaven when they die? No, they don't have souls like we do. <clears throat> they weren't redeemed like we are. And that made when, the image of God. When pets die, they die. Now, you told a little kid that? Yes, I did. And I'll tell that same little kid, Jesus was beat up on the cross. He was stabbed. He was wounded for our transgressions. He just said the truth. It's the truth. It's right. And it's right. Mm -hmm. Are we teaching our children? <laughs> and in fact, I don't know if Bubba remembers this, but kids are usually, once they pick up on this, they're a lot more generous than their parents are because they didn't pay for the groceries, right? <laughs> we was in New Orleans and there was one corner. You could always expect somebody there. And they could see them way before we could. And if we just been grocery shopping, what can we give them? <laughs> well, what can we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was a particular guy that I would visit and only the Lord knows where he's at now or whatever has happened with him. But we've helped, we helped him on more than one occasion. But I'd rather teach him it's always good to do something. It's always the right time to do something good than to teach them, man, just turn your head and don't look and don't notice. So sometimes, you know what that's going to mean? You pull up to that stop sign, the guys hold the sign. If he has anywhere and will work for food, hop in. I know a place hiring. Let me take you. If they don't get in the car, don't you feel bad when you drive off. But you know what I know? If they get in, now you're on the hook. You bet fine. Because, well, not only take them there, but they're going to need a ride. Right. And that means we got to get involved. Yeah. And when we get involved, what is it going to do? It's going to cost us. But there's no joy that you'll find greater on earth than doing something for somebody that cannot pay you back when you walk in obedience to the Lord. When you put someone before yourself, what, what is then if we don't do that? But what is so sad is their Bible studies led them to this position of self-justification. That's the danger. Oh, I love Jesus. Be careful. I read the word every day. Be careful. These people did too. But if we're not careful, we will allow self-justification to overrule the pain and suffering of others. Yeah. Maybe the United States doesn't need to be the world cops, but you can't convince me that Honduran people wouldn't welcome us with open arms if we got rid of the druggies that are destroying their families, that are destroying their livelihoods, that are causing them to live in fear. You can't tell me the people wouldn't be excited for us to show up. 
man, if I was in that situation and somebody with big muscles and power showed up, I'd be like, dude, what took you so long? But we've let morality become a politic rather than a biblical ethic. Here, they'd have been just as happy if that man went home as broken as he was when he showed up at the synagogue. Okay. Not looking around. Brother Luke, what's that visitor's name that came in here a while ago? And Brother Luke wants to say, well, dude, did your tongue quit working? Why don't you walk up and ask them their name? Good heavens. Yeah, that's just a little bit of frustration coming up. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know who it is. You will if you go talk to them. You will. It causes us to invest in other people. And listen, I understand investing in others can bite you. Oh, yeah. It can come close to destroying. But you don't let that stop you from doing what is right. And when you do, when you do, and you, there's no malice, okay, when you do, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow. But you will see that those that did the the damage have all they're all suffering now. God will take care of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we but you have to be faithful. If we recoil though and won't put ourselves out there, then we have done exactly what Satan expected for us to do. That's right. And he wins. That's exactly right. Yeah. It it's gonna cost us. It would cost them having to change some of their traditions. Like Jesus wasn't crucified on a Friday. He was crucified on a Thursday. Why is that not plain for everybody else as it is for me? Well, tradition. Well, I can sing tradition again if you'd like. Tradition doesn't save anybody. Jesus warned us against tradition. And I'm going to say this. You, if you think you know what you believe, you better know why you believe it. But if you say, well, it's just what I believe is tradition, you ain't got a leg to stand on. I can at least take on, well, Brother Luke, I was studying and I put this together and put this together. We're on a good grounds. But if all you say is tradition, you ain't got a leg to stand on. Because that's what these guys stood on. Tradition. What rabbi after rabbi after rabbi after rabbi after rabbi taught them. Yeah, but... But Spurgeon said this and so-and-so said this. So Jesus said this. And I think Jesus is much more wiser than Spurgeon ever was. Or a Stanley or a Rogers or whoever. MacArthur, I fill in the blank. They quoted men rather than living out the gospel. And therein lies a danger that we can know so much scripture that we become absolutely useless because we know the written word, but we don't know the one that the word testifies of. And Jesus said, these are they which testify of me. Look what Jesus did on the Sabbath day. If somebody needed help, he did good. And it didn't matter if it was a tax collector. It didn't matter if it was a publican. It didn't matter if it was a woman at the well or a woman caught in adultery. When it was an opportunity to do good, he did it. Comments, thoughts, or questions before I keep going? I'm just thinking, can you imagine how evil it would be to see somebody come in here and heal someone and want to kill them? Say that again. Can you imagine how bad we'd have to be to see someone come here and heal someone and then we'd want to kill him for that? Mm -hmm. I don't know about y'all, but I'd be asking him to give my wife a brain. <laughs> but, but that is the thing. What what must... I can say that I don't have a wife. <laughs> so nobody will hurt me for this. <laughs> but that testifies a lot about what's in the heart. I mean, that. man, they didn't stand up at all during the song service. Maybe their knees hurt. 
maybe they stood on their feet all night and, and it just feels good to their feet to get off of them. I mean, I can play this game all night long. Do you get on your knees when you pray? I, uh, if we want to talk about them, we, we can play the game all night, but rather than, man, hope they're okay. One quick story, I'll share it with you. I was at a church. I wasn't involved in leadership or nothing. I was a young teenager, and I noticed that during the communion, and I know we're not supposed to be looking around, but I noticed the guy didn't take anything when it was passed. So I'm thinking, this guy needs Jesus. That, that's what I'm thinking. So after church is over, I mean, I don't run over there bare guns a-blazing, yeah. but I'm going to go talk to this guy. And I go talk to him about Jesus, and his own words were, no, I'm a believer. Just some things right now. It's not good for me to, to do this. A couple of weeks later, he stood up in front of the church, gave a testimony that he was going home that night to kill himself. But because I asked him the question, he decided not to. Now, he wasn't willing to take of communion because he was thinking of going home nice. and taking his own life that night. I wish it all ended great because eventually the guy did take his life. But when you notice somebody's not right, it's an opportunity to do good. Amen. Amen. They're over there crying. I wonder. I wonder if something's wrong. Let's go send Brother Luke. <laughs> Why don't you sit down and talk to him? You might be the one that can reach him, and I can't. But we tend to judge before we even think about it. it and that's my point. If I know Jesus, then I see the opportunity I ought to be like, "Hey, can I be of a help to you? Can yes. I be of assistance? Can I pray with you?" Even if they turn it down, that's up. That's up to them. But there ought to be a willingness in our hearts that we want to see good done when opportunity is there. Oh, I said one more while ago. I'm going to say one more again. Okay. <laughs> Man, I can't believe. The only time they ever show up is when we have something special here, dinner on the grounds or something. Well, bless God, they came to church, and even if it's on the, on the times that we have dinner on the grounds, at least that one day of the year, the five times a year, they're hearing the gospel when they come. Amen. I don't know what they're doing here. They're from another church. Well, if they're from the body of Christ, they're part of us. I can do this all day long. It's amazing how we can close up into that pharisaical attitude and not even realize we've done it. Not even realize. And not even realize it. And stories like these reveal to us what can happen. That we can be so caught up in standing for our version of the truth that we miss the truth when it stands among us and even does a healing in front of us. So let's go figure out how to murder this guy now. Something about that just don't pass the smell test to me. Okay, I'm going to... Anybody else have a thought or a question? Me and Brandy found out today that there's a, a parent at the school that she lives in Sulphur, but her son is friends with this little girl that her dad kicked her out of the house. And she didn't want to change schools because school is almost done. This mama to this boy drives every day to De Quincey, picks up the little girl, brings her to the middle school every day and comes pick her up, drops her back off every single day. She doesn't even know, like, knows wow. nothing about the neurologist. And then we were like, yeah, well, we know who's the crazy people in the family. It's the other. And this mama is like the real thing. Because the wow. ex is a key, you know, it's a bad situation. But, yeah. And when you get to do the right thing, no, you can testify about Jesus. That's right. Why, did, why would you even stop and help me? Because Jesus helped me. Yeah. That's a good answer. The Christian aid ministry didn't ask what church you go to. They came here for six months, five months, and they went out to help those who were their neighbors in need 
We had men that flew in from Alaska. We had one man drove down by himself from Canada. We had people take the train from Arizona. We had men driving down from Maine, all over the country to give up a week of income, pay their own way here to give of themselves. And then the coup de grace is to do it with joy and love in your hearts, like yes. Jesus did yes. when he healed these people. Absolutely. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, at least for me, Father, this is a convicting message that I need to be careful when I'm studying that I don't lose sight of why Jesus came. And that if I am going to preach the word, it becomes immediately necessary that I live the word. Help me to be moved by the things that move you and to obey. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you go, go ahead. Let's go ahead, brother. Come stand up here next to me. Yeah, you. You done done it. You ain't a woman. What you get so mad? <laughs> <laughs> this is Russell Sinset. I've known Russell for a little while. But some reason unbeknownst to me, Russell said he wants to be a part of Westside. And so I told him that what happens is I ask the person to stand in front of the church and I ask you something like this. Russell, there's only one name of one person that died to take away your sins and that takes away the sins of anyone, but he will take the sins from anyone who calls upon him. Who is that and have you called upon him? Jesus and yes. Amen. Amen. He's one of us. Amen. He just Amen. wants to be one of us locally. Well, I have to say, from the first time I've come here, I felt at home. Y'all are a nice and every bunch of people. We fake it really well. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am? She said we fake it really well. Oh. <laughs> well, from what I understand, you pull plows. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to welcome him after I pray, uh, well, I did pray. Well, <laughs> you, I'm going to hang up, Renee. Make sure you say hi to Russell. Russell, welcome. Thank you. That's part of Westside Baptist Church. Thank you. Good Thank, to have you. Thank you all. All right. <laughs> Nice to meet all y'all.